Hi, good afternoon folks. In this video, game day. The Sabres are in their last road game of the season. Let's look at it coming up. All right, so the boys are in their final game as they're playing the Bruins in Boston. Calm down, calm down. Let's see if the boys can win it. And what we'll do in this one, I believe, is probably give it our all once again. And we'll just throw the dice once again and hopefully come out on top once again. This is what I'm hoping, guys. I really want to close on a six-game winning streak. I know that's like greedy, but I've learned to be greedy this year. <laughs> so there you go. So there's a few things I'll, we'll look at. Now what I want to do is I'm going to, give, I'm going to show you a clip, guys, of the standings, okay? There's um, how we can, I would say, mess them up because I think if Boston had a choice, they'd rather, probably rather play Toronto than they'd rather play um, Carolina. Carolina's red hot right now. I know Toronto is also, but I think Boston would still match Toronto better and Toronto's a much less physical team, really. And I think uh, Toronto would uh, be an easier task for the Bruins than Carolina is going to be. So let's look at the standings here. Here we go. All right, so there you see, there are 105 points. Washington have clinched eighth. We know that Washington's not budging. Tampa is right now three points in front of Boston. Both have two games left. And if Boston could finish tied with them, okay, in points, Boston would get the nod because of the regulation wins. Obviously, they, they wouldn't even need to win in regulation, but they might because of, you know, they, they need to pick up three points and Tampa zero, or they got to pick up all four points and Tampa one. Now, if Boston do win and, and do get that and finish in third somehow, then they'll play Toronto, of course. If they stay where they're staying, they're playing Carolina. So Toronto has their hands full. Toronto has their hands full with either Tampa or Boston. This is the year Toronto can't choke. Really, this is the year that the Leafs, I'm even expecting to do something this year. Now, I want to go over one thing before we talk about the game, guys. Uh, I, I browsed through the notes and I noticed a few notes, uh, a little confused about the, the standings where we are right now for Vegas's draft pick. So let's take a look at this, okay? Because there is some there is some possibilities. Somebody thought, I, I forget, uh, and I'm not calling you out, but somebody thought it was 15th. It's, it's actually 16th. Let's take a look at this clip. Okay. You see currently Vegas is in 16th. Six, it, it, very simple. I mean, take a look at the points. Vegas have the best points. They got the worst odds. They finished the lowest. Uh, the odds are the same though, if you look. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. But Vancouver could finish higher than Vegas in the standings, which would bump them down to 16th. And we would get that 15th pick. See, Vancouver has two games left, 89 points, and Vegas has one game left with uh, 92 points. So Vegas and Vegas are playing in St. Louis. So if, if Vancouver has been on a hot streak too, so if Vancouver can win out their last two games, guys, the odds are pretty, pretty good that we could actually get the 15th pick, forget the 16th, maybe even the 15th. So that's, uh, that's that. Now, I just wanted to show you that. I'm sorry if I, I forgot who, who, who posted that, and I don't want to start going and checking right now. But if there's any confusion right now, this moment, the Sabres do have the 16th pick. Could we get the 15th? Yeah. Yeah, with a little luck, we could. Let me check Vancouver's final two games, because I think Vegas is going to be so not motivated to even play another hockey game. That, uh, and St. Louis, okay, right now in the standings, are fighting for home ice, uh, for home ice right now. They're 109 points, so is Minnesota. St. Louis have that one last game left. They have to win it. And Minnesota uh, have to win just one of the last two, but anything can happen this time of the year. Now, Vancouver's last two games, let me just check, guys. Because if Vancouver could win out, they got LA at Vancouver, Vancouver at Edmonton. No, these aren't gonna be easy games for the Canucks. Won't be easy, but anything can happen, guys. No matter what, what we want to look at with that is that the Vegas have a 0.5% chance to win the lottery, a one in 200 chance that they'll get the combination. So we have to hope now, and I might make a follow-up video 
for that Vegas uh, situation. I might make a follow-up. I've seen some of you like the other one and had a little fun with it. Maybe we'll just have a closeout to that one. But now Vegas, if they can not win the lottery, then yeah, we're going to get a we're going to get another top sixteen pick in the you know we're going to be in the first half with two two uh, first rounders of that lot of that uh, draft and uh, you know so yeah I'm still pulling for Vancouver to maybe squeeze out those two games somehow I think they could beat LA uh, winning in Edmonton Edmonton might be smart and rest their players I don't know we'll have to see I think it would be the smart move it, it wouldn't make any sense to really play McDavid the last game of the year and take a chance right. Edmonton's already locked their positioning, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, that, that's, uh, that's where that's at, guys. So, yeah, we've got another... We just got to hope that Vegas don't squeeze out some luck and win, that, win, win one of the lotteries with the 0.5% the chance. Anything can happen in a lottery. Anything can happen. Anything. It can happen. Yes, it can. It, it, I know it's a long shot, but it can happen. You ever won $10 on a scratch ticket for $1? Well, there you go. You beat those odds. You know what I mean? You can. doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So if the Sabres, uh, and I'm guessing Vegas will nab the pick if they jump up to number six. You know, because don't forget, guys, they can only move up 10 positions this time, right? Anyway, I'm going to do a video on the lottery. We'll, we'll talk about it. Let's wait till the positioning's done and it's finished, and then we'll look at it. And break down the odds and 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 everything. You know, we'll just break it all down. What what um, what can happen? What the Sabers are looking at? I mean, the Sabers could win the lottery, guys. We literally could win the lottery and and get the number one pick. It's not impossible. Not impossible. So, I'm just gonna like go with whatever happens, and uh, I'm I'm just draft right. Is all I care. Just draft the right players. Do not, and I don't mean Shane Wright. I'm talking like draft draft smart. You know, if, and I, it doesn't matter what's available. I never think of a team's current needs in the draft. I just don't because it's not going to make a bit of difference in three years from now because we'll have addressed that issue by then. When the Habs took Kokiemi, I was really surprised, really. And, they, and I talked to my friend on this, and right away he said, yeah, but we need a centerman. I'm like, do you understand that this guy's not going to be like a number one centerman maybe for five years? Do you get that? Like, do you, you know? So, and, uh, and between, uh, and during all that time, after all that, they, they got Suzuki in a trade. And you know what I mean? So you always address your needs and trades and free agency, immediate trade, uh, immediate needs. But when it comes to long-term needs, every team has long-term needs. Every team. Um, in every position. So... Yeah, I'm with Brian Burke's mentality. I always have been. You draft what is the best, you believe, the best player left available, whether it be forward, defenseman, goalie, you know. Usually it's not goalie in this day and age, but uh, I, that's what I would hope they would do. I, I, I don't care if we draft a defenseman uh, when it comes to our pick. I really don't care. As, and, and it doesn't even have to be a right-sided defenseman. It has to be who's the best player left, who's going to help deepen our franchise because this is what it comes down to eventually guys is smart draft choices when it comes to winning cups eh? as we all know so the boys today let's get back to this one because I'm rambling and I, I want to close up I got pasta cooking and soup cooking guys I'm on a roll so I got to get back out in the kitchen uh, the boys today uh, there should be a very loose atmosphere I believe they should come right out just playing good let's hope that uh be nice to see Tage get a few, wouldn't it? Hey, and then we go right to that last game of the year with Tage on the bubble of 40. That would be nice. It would be. So it would be nice if Tage got a few today. I'm hoping uh, whoever gets a, a, you know, whoever scores today just scores. But I would, I am really pulling for Tage Thompson to get some goals. Or Skinner. I'd like to see him have a shot at 35 also. So we'll just see. We'll see how this pans out, guys. It's going to be very... I'm going to be a little nervous for this one because I really want to go into the last game of the year on a five-game winning streak. And if we don't win today, well, so be it. It's been a fun run this year, no matter what, down the stretch. But I'd like to have the whole thing at this point. <laughs> I just would. I want the whole thing. I want to just milk the whole thing right to the end now, if we could. It would be just great if we could. But we'll see what the hockey gods decide, guys. All right. That's it. I'm going to put up this video, get it up because it's late. I got in late. I got to get this video on ASAP. I will see you folks in the post game. 
Go Sabres, let's make it five in a row. Come on boys, do it. See you then guys.